Ladies and gents, we got a little bit of Lauren Hill and the Fugees singing Roberta's Flax, Killing Me Softly. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to go ahead and bring those of you who are dealing with mortgage issues. We know that they're getting ready to um, start with the foreclosures during the winter. I need you all to pay attention to that fact right there. During the winter. Now, remember that idiot said that you guys were going to go through a dark winter. Now, remember, I'm the first person that shouted to all of you that they were going to release something and then they were going to release a trigger. And that trigger is what's going to lead to all of the so-called deaths. Isn't it interesting that the new Omicron, Omicron is not as bad as we thought it was, but we made all this hype about it, but it ain't as bad. And then watch and see how it infects everybody, especially those who have been who have been vaccinated. And then watch and see what happens after that. Just hey, you heard it here first. This is the way they think, ladies and gentlemen. They distract you with all of the hoopla, and then they hit you aside the head with a sledgehammer. And you're supposed to go, "Why'd you do that?" Okay. So. Let's go ahead and talk. Those of you who have mortgages, this is for you. You need to see this information. You need to hear this information. T-R-I-D. Trent. Hey, what up, Trent? Guidance for loan numbers. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, there's some guidelines for loan numbers. No, they're not just guidelines. There's a law showing you what can and cannot be done with a loan number. Now, I've shown this to you before. But I like the way this particular website, June 25th, 2019, put this information out there for y'all. This is B as in Baker, M-A-N-D, so B man G. B, M as in man, D, A as in Albert, N as in Nancy, D as in David, G as in George, dot com forward slash best hyphen practices hyphen t r i d hyphen guidance hyphen on hyphen loan hyphen numbers just a sentence right here no colon just dashes between every word you can actually type this in google and get here faster i'll get there when you get there ain't you supposed to be saying i'll see you when you get there no nope, i'll get there when you get there Okay, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. We sat down again with Millie Simmons, our closing supervisor, fulfillment manager, in Lormond. Ladies and gentlemen, I love titles. These people got all of these titles, and they think they're somebody. Anyway, for advice about a common question that arises with the closing. It arises with a closing? Ah, hold on. Millie... It is acceptable for a loan to close, or is it acceptable for a loan to close with a loan ID number showing to be determined? <laughs> no, you can't do that. You need a loan number on the documents at closing. Hold on. In this case, the closing docs has not yet been disclosed, and the lender is inquiring whether it is acceptable to change the loan ID or close with a TBD showing on the loan docs. Ladies and gentlemen, they wanted to know whether it is acceptable to change that loan ID number. Let's find out, okay? According to TRED, the loan number must be unique to that loan. It's called a transaction number. Ladies and gentlemen, in the background, we got my man, Richard Dimplesfield. And he's talking about if it ain't one thing, it's another. Ladies and gentlemen. Or close with the to be determined showing on the loan docs 
and the closing docs, ladies and gentlemen, they cannot do to be determined on the closing docs. There must be a unique loan identifier number on that. The number is unique. It is the reason why it is unique because it's for that loan. Hold on. Let me make sure y'all understand. This number, this loan number associated with this mortgage is a unique number for that loan. Okay, not just any number, that loan, no other loan has that number. Pay attention. According to TRID, the loan number must be unique. The loan number must be unique. To be determined does not appear to be unique per TRID's guidance, as it does not appear tailored towards a specific consumer. That loan number is your number. You're the consumer. It identifies a transaction. They can't just change it because they felt like it. How many of you have five, six, seven, eight loan numbers throughout the course of your loan? There is no provision in law for that. Let's continue. Our opinion is that it would not meet this requirement. What requirement? Here is the official comment to section 1026.37A12. This is from the Truth in Lending Act, ladies and gentlemen. Keep that code with you. Don't lose it. That's your code. By my side, she's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Sorry. <laughs> Richard Dimplesfield, y'all. And the link to it on the Consumer Fraud or Consumer Financing Pr Finance Protection Bureau, CFPB. Unique identifier, ladies and gentlemen, this is every loan must have a unique identifier, not eight unique identifiers, one unique identifier. Pay attention. 1026.37A12 requires 1026.37A subsection A at subsection 12 requires that the creditor disclose a loan identification number that may be used by the creditor, the consumer, and other parties to identify the transaction. Labeled as loan ID number. The loan identification number is determined by the creditor, not by the new creditor, not by the third creditor, not by the fourth creditor, but the original creditor, people. Wait, how do we know this? Which number may contain alphanumeric characters because the number must allow for identification of a particular credit transaction, the original transaction. Under 1026.37A12, a creditor must use a unique loan identifier, the, uh, la, 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 identification number, i.e., the creditor may not use the same loan identification number for a different but related loan transaction, such as a different loan for the same borrower. Pay attention. May not use the same loan identification number for a different but related loan, such as a different loan for the same borrower. They also can't use a different loan number for the same borrower for the original transaction where a creditor used a revised loan estimate for the transaction. Remember, pay attention. Revised loan estimate for the original transaction when they came up with the loan number originally. Notice what they must do. The loan identification number must be sufficient to enable the identification of the transaction pursuant to this right here, which means it must have a hyphen and include the original loan number at the beginning before that hyphen. So it can be whatever the loan number was, dash A, dash B, dash C, dash E, dash F, and G. You see what I'm saying? So ladies and gentlemen, uh, when you all get the chance, I want you to go here, and then I want you to click on the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau website because they have a link to the code. Okay? I want you all, sorry, let's... Um, Let's make this a little bit larger. Y'all don't mind? I've always had respect for Mr. Richard Dimplesfield that he could go ahead and 
put this scripture, a uh, set of scriptures, in his song, and it flowed. Got to give my boy credit. You know what I'm saying? Loan identification number, loan ID, a number that may be used by the credit or consumer or other parties to identify the transaction, not the several transactions, labeled loan ID number. For official interpretation of this, official interpretation, uh -uh, y'all don't get to interpret nothing. What the, y'all talking about official interpretation? Hold on, ladies and gentlemen, let's find out what's going on with the interpretation. Unique identifier. Section, this section right here requires that the creditor disclose, that the creditor disclose a loan identification number that may be used by the creditor, consumer, and other parties to identify the transaction, the original transaction, not the latter transaction. We'll prove to you that it's original transaction in just a second. Label loan ID number. The loan identification number is determined by the creditor, the original creditor, not the subsequent creditors. Which number may contain an alphanumeric characters because the number must allow for the identification of a particular credit transaction under this section, the creditor must use a unique loan identification number, i.e. the creditor may not use the same loan identification number for a different but related loan transaction, such as a different uh, different loans to the same borrower, such as different loans to the same borrowers. Only one loan number per loan. When a creditor issues a revised loan estimate or a revised loan number for a transaction, the loan identification number must be sufficient to enable the identification of the transaction pursuant to this. That original loan identification number. Now, Let's see the interpretation, okay? In supplemental supplement one. I'd rather be with yo. Yeah, how? Sorry, this is uh my girl Leela James, and she's saying that she'd rather be with yo. Unique identifier requires the creditor to disclose that and let a creditor must use loan identification which is issued by the loan estimate the identification sufficient it just took us back to the same thing so it took us in circles ladies and gentlemen the original information was on the website for the consumer finance protection bureau on their first page not this page this is the link to this section but where they put the original loan information originally Okay, look at that. RH, a loan that is insured or guaranteed by a state agency must also be disclosed as other. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you guys to do is I want you to understand there is no provision for them changing that number. There is no provision because it deals with the original transaction. When your loan is sold to another entity you don't have a new creditor ladies and gentlemen it is just the creditor even though the name may have changed it's not a new loan so they don't get permission to change anything okay i just want y'all to understand what's going on here they cannot change the loan number people they never have permission this is just a practice junk that they do okay I don't want to search the regulation. I want to go uh, back to the CFPB to the very beginning. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Truth and Lending Act, regulation number Z. So, y'all hold on a second. Interactive Bureau Regulations, Banks and Banking, CFR, Code of Federal Regulations, and Home Credit Opportunity Act, Mortgage Dis Home Mortgage Disclosure, uh, mortgage leasing, mortgage licensing, fair debt collection practices, land registration, consumer, fair credit reporting, uh -huh. truth in lending. Do you see that right there? Truth in lending. There are some amendments for April 1st, 2022. Let's see what amendments has been put in the Truth in Lending Act for next year. This is not the current regulation. Yeah, I, I know it's not the current regulation, you ignorant mother. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, view this version. Okay. 
Definition of rules, exempt transactions. Authority, don't care. Purpose, to promote the informed use of consumer credit by requiring disclosures of the terms and costs and blah, 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 blah. Coverage, official interpretation, and credit cards, except transactions subject to this. No person is required to provide disclosures required under these sections of the Truth and Lending Act for Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act for RISPA. There, look, ladies and gentlemen, you know how you guys have been asking them to provide this and that under RISPA, your QWRs? They're now saying that they're not required to do this anymore. Okay? If the person, if no person is required to provide disclosure required by these sections of the Truth and Lending Act for RISPA, R-E-S-P-A, the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, or the disclosure required prior to the settlement by the 129CH of the Truth and Lending Act, except in transactions subject to 1026.20E. No person is required to provide the disclosure required under this section, 129DJ1B, of the Truth and Lending Act, except as transactions under 126.39D5. No person becoming a creditor with respect to an existing residential loan is required to provide disclosures required by these sections of the Truth and Lending Act. That You will no longer be able to demand they prove this or prove that, ladies and gentlemen. They are tying your hands behind your back. Hey, if I rule the world, I free all my son. I love him, love him, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Curtis Blow, the original, if I ruled that world. Okay? All right. Just thought I'd show this to you guys to let you know what's coming. No more QWRs, ladies and gentlemen. They're about to change the whole game. Why? Because it was causing too many problems. So they have to make it easier on the banks. Okay? But right now, the loan number thing, nobody's been using. They're going to change that eventually too because you guys are going to start using it. So be prepared for it. Okay? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're on the Mac. That's right. We're on the Macintosh computer this time. And so what I'm about to do is I'm about to leave y'all to y'all day because it's been a long day for me. Gotta go. Take care.